everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today I thought that we would do a wreath, um, an autumn wreath to celebrate the coming of the new season. And so um, first of all, I'm going to show you uh, how I prepared this subject for you and um, just quickly look through my sketchbook. This is uh, one that I made earlier. And um, this is what a, a, this is what your sketchbooks should look like if you're using a sketchbook to prepare for your painting sessions. And um, so you can see that in here I've got all the preparatory work that I did for the last few weeks of sketches. Some of it's not so tidy, some of it's interesting, some of it isn't. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. And you might recognize some of these videos and some of these swatches and some of these things I haven't yet done. Um, and notes that I make and sketches that I do and so on and so forth. So if any of you want to see any of these ones actually worked up into a video like these trees, for example, we did that one, didn't we? Um, then do put something in the comments below. That's always a good way of communicating with me. These ones are much more recent. This is a doodle I did the other day while I was, I don't know what I was doing, talking, I think. And anyway, so today, this is the preparatory sketch that I've done. Um, I'm going to make a, a circle. I'm going to put these different seasonal items in it, around it, in this circle. And then we're going to have a caption in the middle. And I thought that, uh, although it's probably a bit, um, hackneyed a bit, you know, worn out. The, 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 the line from the poem by Keats, the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, is a lovely uh, evocative, especially if you happen to live in one of the parts of the world where you have lots of autumnal mists like we do here today. The sunrise was beautiful as it came up through the mist. Anyway, so we're going to have things like acorns, oak leaves, beech leaves, beech mast, mushrooms, pumpkins, sycamore, and I've labeled what I've put on here. Um, and then, of course, in order to draw these things, you have to go to reference material to make sure you get it right, because although everyone thinks they know what a beach mast looks like, they don't necessarily. Anyway, I've got two books here, which <clears throat> are really, 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 really useful for people who want to paint nature and who want to get it right. This one is Food for Free by Richard Maybe. It's an old book, been around a long time. Somebody gave me this one because she bought it and when it came it was delivered bent so she didn't want it so she gave it to me um beautiful photos in here highly recommend get a second hand copy of this book you can probably get one for next to nothing it was published in 1972 and this edition was nine was 2012 so it's an old book but this was the color version with loads of beautiful photos which are much easier to refer to than the internet because you can actually see them, touch them. You can almost be there, all damsons and all sorts of slows and lovely, lovely pictures in here. And even better still, at their back, it's got a kind of visual index. So if you, um, if you say to yourself, oh, I'd like to draw some rowan berries, you can turn to this page and it will show you the shape of the leaves, the way the berries hang on the branches and so on. So you can get the, the simplified details there and that's really handy. So I'm using that uh, to check out what hazelnuts and sweet chestnuts and beech nuts look like because I'm going to put those in our painting today. So we'll put that to one side now for the minute and I'll show you the other book that I use, which is an uh, even older book. I got this second hand, it was five pounds. I don't think I paid five pounds from a charity shop, from a thrift shop. And this is 
ancient. Um, very nearly as old as me, older than Tamsin, my daughter. So first edition, this is a first edition, which is, it might even be, well, if it was in good condition, it would be worth something. Book of the British Countryside, published by the AA, the Automobile Association in England in 1972. And this is also, I mean, I do love these old books. They've got so much information in them. It's incredible, incredible. Um, so much that we've forgotten since we simplified it all down and put it online. Anyway, this is um, uh, an artistic rendition of a corner of a beechwood forest, and um, it's got various animals and plants in it and so on and so forth. So I'm using that as inspiration too. And if I want to look anything up, like the skeleton of a bird or the colors and shapes of butterflies, this book is a marvelous reference. So just a couple of ideas if you want to improve your access to real nature reference and um, get things right when you paint them. This kind of book is very helpful. So I will put the names of these in the description below the video in case you feel like going on a hunt. I know in America you might think you wouldn't be able to get this, but I bet you could. I bet you could because I bet you anything you like. A lot of English people who emigrated to Canada, for example, will have. I think I got this in Canada, to tell you the truth. Um, they will have taken these books with them and then when they die, they go to charity shops. So you can get them online. You can go online and order these easily from some of those resellers who try to sell books before they get burnt because if they don't get sold, they get burnt. It's tragic, really. Anyway, put those to one side for a minute. This is the sketch I've done so far. Um, and my next step after having done this rough sketch is to transfer that onto a piece of paper. Okay, so I'm back and I have here a piece of paper, watercolor paper, which we're going to use today. And I've decided to go for a slightly bigger piece than my usual A4. This is a foot, 12 inches by 15, I think. Yeah, and that will give me a bit more space in order to be able to, to do this painting. And I'm going to, first of all, tape it down onto my board. Now I'm using masking tape here because I want it to be fairly firm and the washi tape is very pretty, but it's not as sticky as this. So just to be on the safe side. And um, what I do is I, I have got a spare um, tape dispenser and uh, that had sellotape on it before. And um, so I've got a spare one of those and I decided finally after many years of not doing this, I decided that I would put a piece of, sorry, put a roll of um, masking tape on a dispenser because I'm using it so often. And um, so that's what I did. And that turned out to be really helpful. So now that's nicely stuck down. And uh, I'm, I had a couple of questions about this board that I use or about the boards that I use. This is just a piece of plywood, three eighths of an inch plywood. And um, get it from any lumber yard or a place that sells wood. And uh, just uh, have it cut to size. This is a good size. This is, um, this is, let me see. A good size for your board would be 16 inches by 24 inches. And then you can easily put a piece of paper this big on it um, when you get it home, just give it a quick, um, very, very light sanding and then coat it with a very light uh, coat of polyurethane varnish and that will be absolutely perfect. I suggest you have two of these. I've got a stack of them here because I'm always painting, but you, you need at least two and this will protect your table and you won't have to paint your tabletop as often as I do. Anyway, so the first thing to do is to draw a circle. So I've got my uh, compass here so that I can draw the circle to the size that I want. And I'm going to make it find the center and do a circle. that goes to within about half an inch of the top and the bottom. That's just a guideline, really. 
It's easier than going and finding a plate if you happen to have a pair of compasses handy. It's an old set from school days or university days or whatever. You'll notice that I have very few things that are actually new in my life. Um, so now the next thing to do is to start to draw the design onto here. So we go back to my reference drawing and then I'm going to start drawing that and uh, I'm not going to make you watch me do that this time because it's probably going to take quite a while. So I'll draw that and I'll come back as soon as it's drawn and then we'll go ahead and paint it. So there we are, there's the drawing done and I will be putting a copy of this up on the website for you if you want to download it, a tracing that you can uh, use. Um, and in this wreath I have got a whole lot of different plants. Starting at the bottom here we've got some mushrooms of different sorts and a pumpkin and we've got a little mouse and a bird and then coming up here we've got sweet chestnuts, elderberries, um, we have got um, a bee and a butterfly and on this side we've got some oak leaves and some acorns and some hazelnuts and some beech mast here. Then we've got some um, crab apples and we've got some damsons or sloes either it looks like both and then a couple of wild cherries and we have a, a dragonfly followed up at the top by a little a few little hops which are something which is traditional to where I come from which is Kent in the UK so that's what they use to flavor beer um, so that's a, a lovely uh, early autumn um, garland there with some of the fruits and I think I had some blackberries in there somewhere oh that's right blackberries are meant to be here. I haven't drawn the blackberries, but I will. Um, okay, so in order to do this painting, I'm going to do it in watercolour to start with, and I will either use my um, number seven draw well brush, or and or I'll use my uh, Kira, uh, Kira 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 Take um, water brush. Then, when it's done, depending on how it turns out, I may or may not use the glass pen to do a little bit of inking on top. I did think about inking the whole thing first, but I decided I would go for the painting in the first place. And colours, I've got a, what for me is a fairly broad palette here. I've got seven colours. I'm not sure if I'll use all of these, maybe, maybe not. But anyway, what I have here um, as being the most likely to be needed are Cobalt Blue, Conacridone Gold, Burnt Sienna, Olive Green, Windsor Violet, Lizarin Crimson and Sepia. And I've also got my um, Viviva uh, colour sheets here, um, which I might use the Saffron or the Burnt Sienna or the Vermilion for the pumpkin and the top of this mushroom here, because those are lovely bright colours, which even my beloved Quinacridone Gold can't actually emulate those particular bright shades. So I'm not ashamed to say that I will use whatever I can lay my hands on in order to achieve the colour that I'm looking for. So I'll just move these things a little bit out of the way for now. And um, as well as all of that, I've got my piece of toweling here that I can dry my brush on. And I've got a sheet of paper, just a spare sheet of rough paper to try colours out on as I go along. Oh, and I should mention I did the drawing for this in um, a B-roll Charisma colour, a, a soft pencil, it's a Charisma Graphite Aquarelle. That means that it will run slightly if um, when, when I put um, the paint on, but that will probably just add to the depth, so I'm not too worried about that. In fact, that was a deliberate choice of mine. Um, so there we are. Now, in order to get this painting to work properly, whenever you're doing something fairly big like this, you want to probably start by laying in the brightest colours first and then the rest of it will fall into place behind that. Um, otherwise, if you start with the leaves and, and the smaller things, when you put in something really bright like a pumpkin, um, that might throw the whole colour balance off a bit. So, that, bearing that in mind, I'm going to probably start um, with 
um, some bright, a bright colour. I'm not quite sure which one yet. Um, my uh, colour sheets are starting to wear out, so I'm getting to the point now where um, I'm going to have to either get some more or um, go back to my other colours. So I'm going to start by putting in some um, this is this is dusk or no this is vermilion I think no it's not it should be though vermilion is probably the best way to go so And then maybe we'll add a little bit of maybe chrome yellow is is what I need. Sort of blend in. Okay, so that's that. And then the other really bright thing is the top of the toadstool, which is a nice red. So I'm mixing alizarin crimson here with um, chrome yellow. And then I'm going to come in and just try and paint a little bit around the dots because I'm going to say that this, this particular toadstool has got white spots on it. So we'll just paint around those using a, a rough mixture of alizarin crimson and chrome yellow. So just trying out blending actually the normal Windsor & Newton or Old Holland colours with these um, colour sheets. So those are the most vivid colors and then of course I did say that we were going to have some wild cherries up here so since I've got red on the brush I'll put those in and what else have we got that's red the apples are going to be a little bit more golden so I'm going to use quinacridone gold and a touch of red. And maybe a touch of green as well. I'm going to use um, olive green, just a little bit of green around there. Okay, now what else have we got? I think it's probably not a bad idea to do the fruit and so on. Oh, these um, toadstools down here are also on the red side, so we'll put in their lids. But their stalks, their stems or whatever are going to be sort of brownie beige colour. And then we've got two more mushrooms here. And these ones are neutral in colour, so sort of kind of brownie, brownie pink. So that's that. So those are most of the bright colours. Um, the other bright thing is the, the blackberry up here, which is sort of bright. And I hadn't drawn it very well, but I'll just come in and finish that off with lots of little circles. Okay, 
put one here. And then the elderberry, which is quite a dark, this is, you could say tedious. So just lots of dots. Okay, and um, oh yes, the damsons over here, which are also purple, like that. And try and make a little bit of variety there by coming in with something a little bit darker. Damsons or slows, I'm not sure which I would like those to be. If they're slows, they're smaller. Uh, what else have we got that's got colour? I think that's about it. Um, okay. So I'm going to come into the pumpkin and draw in some of its shadowy bits where the um, what would you call those the segments I suppose sort of thing are and then with some dark green we will drop in the stem Want it quite as dark as that, so I'm just going to lift a little bit out. Um, now, let's see. Um, let's maybe start at the top here with the dragonfly, and um, let's just drop in some nice light, light blue, and then maybe a touch of violet for the second of the wings, like that. And then the B, we need some yellow for the body parts that are yellow. And we'll let that dry and then we'll put the black in in a minute. But um, a little bit of orange at the bottom. And let that bleed a little bit. Um, and then we have a butterfly up there. So I think to sort of match the dragonfly, we'll do the butterfly in, in blue. Call this a blue butterfly. And that can have a, a sort of dark blue body like that. And when that's dry, we'll put in the, um, the legs and antennae and things. And I like it when, if you put the body of your dragonfly in while it's still wet, it will bleed out a little bit into the wings, which looks kind of natural. So that's a good thing. Okay, so. A little bit concerned that I might have made the, the pumpkin a little bit too bright. So I'm just going to lift some of the colour out. So, you know, this is a good thing to be able to do. Don't hesitate if you feel you might have overdone it. Always possible to lift paint out. Don't believe anyone who says that watercolour is difficult because you can't correct anything. You can. Just 
a matter of doing it. So that's much better. Right, now we need to start thinking about some greens. And um, I'm going to start at the top, I think, work down perhaps with my hops, which are a sort of yellowy green color like this. reference book to see what colour the leaves of the hops are when they are um, when they are fruiting. Page 36, 440, 440. Hops. Right, they're quite quite a bluish green. When I grew up as a child living in Kent, it was called the Garden of England, Kent. And um, there were hop fields and apple orchards and everything everywhere. It was a beautiful place. I think now most of the, if not all of the hops have gone. I think we import the hops for, well, I mean, let's face it, who makes beer anymore? Nobody really. Apart from my, my uh, nephew who had a few years ago started a home brewery business, you know, one of those, what do they call them, bijou pubs, they make their own beer. But it's very small compared to what it used to be. I lived in Faversham for a while, I don't know if any English people out there remember Shepherd Neem, the brewery, I think it's still there, but I don't suppose it's very important anymore. I expect they get their hops from Poland or something. Okay, so it's moving on, moving on. Um, acorns are brown. So let's go for something like um, burnt sienna. The acorns down here. And then a darker brown for the cup. So we use sepia for that. This is a fun painting because it's got lots of different colours in it. And then I'm going to do um, burnt sienna also for these oak leaves. But I'm going to add a little bit of purple as well. And a little bit of sepia. some shadow in underneath those mushrooms since I've got the right colour. Wait for that to dry and then we'll do the same there. Meanwhile this is dry so we'll put some shadow on that mushroom and then down below as well on these little legs. And um, so green, some kind of green here for this beech leaf. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, let's put one here as well. And here we've got a little knot. First coat, let that dry, come in and give it some shape like we have here. And we could uh, use the pen without any ink, just use the pen to draw in the lines. And here on the cup, which of the acorn cup has dots. And this one is also in here so that's olive green plus a little bit of quinacridone gold I don't really like the way I did that so I'm going to take that out make that shorter in a minute and I'm going to make this into a robin. So we give him a red breast. And then the brown back and tail and wing. And we'll do his eye and his beak and his legs shortly. Let's put this veins in that leaf too. <clears throat> Over here we have a little mouse. So burnt sienna for his little face. a little bit of grey a bit of pink for his ears and we let him dry too and then we'll put in the details of his paws and things And then we've got some leaves here. And this is um, beach mast. Which has a sort of greeny brown pacing around it. And then the stem of the mushroom, I guess, is going to be just kind of beigey colour. A little bit of brown in it like that. And then this part is going to 
the grey underneath. And we can draw in a few of the gills. They'll just show very lightly. And then now we're, oh, okay, we have another beech leaf here. Let's make this one nice and golden. Touch of green. Oak leaves golden on the underneath and then into that we're going to paint other colours just to keep it all very varied. Maybe this one could be a little bit purpley, burnt sienna. And then the apple, that's going to be a brighter green, slightly brighter green for the leaves. They're sort of smooth edged, the apple leaves a little bit more. And then these leaves here, nice and simple. Just plain green, keep that one simple. Cherry leaf, thin, jagged there. And I'm not quite sure Oh, those, oh, I don't know what those ones are. Perhaps they're apple leaves as well. They look like they could be. And then these ones here. Let's have a few, I forgot to draw them in, but we'll have a few red berries there. We could call this, this would be Rowan. There we are, and probably the same on the other side, here. Rowan berries. And then, we're getting there, we are getting there. These are blackberry leaves and they're always pretty brownish and jagged. And now we have the bee and that's where we're probably gonna need a little bit of black for him. So we just pop his black areas in like that. And then we'll just drag up a little fraction of color into his wings like that. And in a second, I'll put in his feet. Okay, so these are late blackberry flowers. So to paint a white flower, you just, or pink, you just, very delicately just to indicate a little bit of shadow. And then in the middle, of course, yellow like that. And we want a little bit of green for the leaves behind. And these are elderberries. So we need some nice green leaves for them.
contrast with the purple of the leaves of the berries. And then here we've got horse chestnut. They're one of the more colourful leaves uh, in England, I think, probably everywhere. I think they have a lot of them in Spain, don't they? And um, the casing is usually green, isn't it? Light green, I think. Yes. That was my phone speaking to me. I'm not sure why, I didn't ask him to. Inside of the horse chestnut, the case is beige, like that. And then the chestnut itself, of course, is quite bright brown, like that. Okay, I'm going to grab my um, fine liner, pigment liner, for the legs of the bird, the robin, and his beak, and his eye, and also for the antennae of the bee and his legs, and the antennae the butterfly and the dragonfly and then down here the mouse his nose his whiskers his little paws uh, what else have we got we've got the beach mast here Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to rub out all the pencil and I'll be back in a second for the final finishing touches. So that's the final painting. I hope you've enjoyed watching me do that today. Um, I've just put uh, a line from Keats in the center there to give you an idea of what it would look like with some kind of quotation or slogan in the middle. Um, something that you can adapt to use for lots of different purposes. It would make a nice card or any other um, invitation, something like that. If you've got some kind of um, harvest festival going on, it could be used for something along those lines. Um, anyway, it's fun to do. Um, you can visit my website at dianeanton.com and download the sketch, and you'll probably make a much better job of it than me. So I will say goodbye for now. I'll let you get on with the rest of your day. Have a lovely time painting and uh, enjoy the evening. And I'll say, see you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye bye.